from Seattle, Washington, it's theCUBE, covering AWS Imagine. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're in downtown Seattle at the AWS Imagine Education event. It's the second year of the event. It's about 800 people. Uh, we were here last year too. I think it was 400 people, so it's growing quickly like everything at AWS. It's all about education. That's, that's public school, private school, university, K through 12, community college, everything you can imagine. It's a really comprehensive kind of area that Amazon's focusing on. We're excited to have our next guest really from the school district. We haven't had anyone from the school district. He's Travis Pock the Senior Director, Information Services for Portland Public School. I'm a proud graduate of uh, the Portland Public School System, so Travis, great to see you. Great to see you. Absolutely, so first off, impressions of the show. You said you weren't able to make it this year. Got to sit in the keynotes this morning with, with Teresa and Andrew, a couple sessions. Just kind of your impressions of being at an event like this. You know, it's really fantastic to have an event that ties together AWS and education and in that education space. Um, it's a great resource for people that are using AWS within the education community. So this has been fantastic. Yeah, it's good, because uh, education is not necessarily touted as the most um, progressive industry. It, exactly. So the fact that they've made this commitment is pretty significant. Yeah, exactly. So exactly. you've had a recent, a recent uh, significant event within mm -hmm. your kind of IT journey and cloud mm -hmm. journey. I wonder if you can tell us what you guys just recently completed. Sure. Um, so we recently migrated our uh, PeopleSoft uh, application from our on-prem data center to the cloud. And you know, one of the one of the real challenges we had was there was no extra money to do this work. So um, we had kind of come across the the idea that the hardware was end of life. And it was going to be about a five hundred thousand uh, dollar replacement cost. In addition to that, we had several on staff uh, positions that really weren't fillable. Um, but it had become such a niche skill set that we really had a lot of trouble trying to get those positions filled. So. Um, in addition to that, uh, my boss came around the corner and said, by the way, we have a 10% budget cut. So how do we resolve all of that, plus address this really big problem with, uh, with the system not even... Uh, and time was ticking, right? Your, your, your hardware time was ticking. It, it was really bad. I mean, we were at a point where we were getting you know, nine, 10 second page refresh times. And you know, the user community had kind of gotten to the point where you know, our, our numbers for satisfaction looked really good because we didn't get complaints because the user community had gotten so uh, disillusioned by making those complaints and not getting any result, right. results that they just gave up on complaining. So we, we were out of time. You're out of time. So you know, typically a cloud migration of an old application is not necessarily the easiest place to get started on your cloud journey. Yes. And did you already have some experience with cloud or was this really kind of your first foray uh, into this well, area? You know, I had, uh, I had worked at a startup um, a few years before and we did our entire infrastructure on AWS. So that was my, my introduction to AWS and AWS services. Um, and there was a lot of uh, there was a lot of people that were looking away from that that as a solution. It didn't seem like the viable thing to do. And you know, yes, we were advised not to try the ERP first, um, but that was our use case. And if we were going to do it, we were going to do it big. So okay. we did. So you brought in some consultants. I would assume that helped out, or did you guys do it um, all in house? Uh, actually, what we did was we looked for a managed service provider. So okay. one, our our use case in that we had many positions that we couldn't get filled. Um, was that we, we needed the virtual infrastructure, but we also needed the people to do some of those tasks for us. So that was, that was our partnership, was we worked with a, a, a managed solution provider called High Street, and High Street uh, really helped us with that process. Okay. And so, how long did it take? When did you get it complete? <laughs> um, we went from idea to completion in four months. Idea so. to completion in four months? Yes. Wow. Yeah, and that was that was unprecedented. No, nobody expected it to work. Certainly, nobody expected it to work that fast. Um, and when you do these migrations, you, you you understand that it is going to be a high stress situation. And the one of the major things that AWS did for us was it gave us that virtual infrastructure so that we could run in tandem. We could actually continue to run completely uh, as we were in production and run the new systems and run all the tests. Right. So we were able to get cut over um, in no time with almost no stress. I so think we had one problem when we went live. So then what did your boss say when he came around the corner? <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, <laughs> good job, Travis. Good, good job, <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, great. So, you know, there's, there's a whole bunch of components to cloud, mm -hmm. right, that have a lot of benefits. Security, like we said, it's actually a lot more secure than, than, than a lot of times your own, your right. own stuff. Um, there's cost savings and there's infrastructure leverage that you can get. But more importantly, and we've heard a lot of the stories here, is it opens up an opportunity for innovation. It opens mm -hmm. up an opportunity to try new things, to move fast. Right. So I wonder if, if, you know, is that kind of an unintended consequence of this process, or do, do you think you've kind of sold the, uh, the in-house people that, you know, look, it, it worked, we did it fast, I assume it's close to budget or close um, to timing, and, and now, you know, I sit here for two days and listen to all the crazy, cool, innovative things that people are doing with Alexa, right. et cetera. So, I mean, where do you go, where do you go next? Um, you know, one of, the, one of the unintended consequences of it was, uh, was granting us a DR process. So we had a, we had a very basic DR system in place and uh, by moving to the cloud, not only did we make it insulated from any events that might happen in our primary building, which is also our primary data center, but it gave us that ability to, to fail over and persist through a, through a significant event. Um, one of the other things it's done though, is it's given our uh, developers access to tools that they just didn't have access to before. So one of the places where we're exper experimenting pretty heavily in is, uh, is Lambda. So serverless functions, trying to get to the point where we can enhance our existing software by making calls out to our Amazon VPC and data that exists out there without having to make hardcore modifications to the internal systems. Right. Um, we, we were actually able to do a demo of that within 30 minutes. So that's that normal process would take about two weeks to write. So, so, so is there is there new stuff on the horizon, or is this are you just like kid in the candy store? Like now, you know, look at the power flexibility um, that we have that we just didn't have it's, kind of strapped to our old data center before. Absolutely. Right now, we're trying to. I think the biggest struggle is trying to figure out what we tackle next. Um, there's a lot of things out there. You know, we have a, a data interchange platform. It would be great if we could replace that with AWS functions and Lambda calls. Um, it, I think that's probably going to be our, our next biggest um, tackle is, is that. Uh, after that, we'd really like to start rewriting some of our in-house written apps completely in AWS services. And I think that's going to be a huge win for the district. Okay, and then do you guys purchase a lot of these other um, app, software applications, there's a lot of companies here that have, uh, Blackboard is just the one that always comes into my head, mm -hmm. not to pick on them specifically, but do you guys have a ton of those types of, of applications in, um, installed as well? We, we definitely tend to leverage uh, bot first, okay. um, but uh, some of them, like School Mint, uh, have been fantastic partners for us, and you know, that's, that's one of the ones that we've really leaned on because of how intricate some of our policies are. School Mint has the capability to implement that for us. Right, right. Well, it sounds pretty exciting. Yeah, it has been. But the question is, when does the grand opening of the of Grant? That's what I want to know. <laughs> I need the date, so afterwards you can send me the date. That's where I went Absolutely. to high school. They just finished a beautiful remodel. I don't even it's know fantastic. how many millions and millions of dollars <laughs> that were spent, but a lot. A very, yes, a lot. <laughs> All right, well, Travis, congratulations. Thank Four you. month uh, ERP move, I don't know. You throw that out as a challenge. Maybe somebody else can beat it. I don't know, that's pretty good. Absolutely. All right, thanks for stopping by. Thank you. All right, he's Travis, I'm Jeff, you're watching theCUBE. We're at AWS Imagine Education in downtown Seattle. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.